Hey Steve here, we're working masterclass. And you want to check to see if the board's nice and flat and true. Apart from using squares, the other thing you can do is winding sticks. Now these are a couple of uh, pieces of mile, which is a really hard Australian timber that I got on a timber trip a couple of years ago. So they're nice and dry and they just don't warp or move. Or if you like, you can get a bit of pine and make one out of that. In fact, if you like, I'll make one now and show you how to make it. If you've got a bandsaw, use a bandsaw, table saw, use a table saw. If you haven't, I'll cut this with a handsaw. Again, change the setting on your gauge. I want this to be roughly in the middle. Not that fussed, really. And I'll mark down there. Turn it around, mark it the other side. That actually is right in the middle, which isn't what I planned, but it doesn't matter. Um, but if you've got the saw blade width apart on your marks, then you saw between that. In this case, I actually um, jagged and scored it right down the middle. So we'll use that as uh, middle and I'll see how good I can saw. Do it on the other side. On a pencil line so I can see what I'm sawing. I'll saw just about halfway this way. Bring the line across so I can follow it. I'll grab a saw. In this case I'm using a rip saw. The difference between a rip saw and a cross cut saw, if you look at the teeth on the rip saw, they're a lot squarer and they're squarer on the tooth. Whereas a cross cut, it's a lot pointier and they're also staggered. The idea of the chisel saw or the chisel teeth on the saw is so it'll actually shear the long grain when I'm cutting through it, not sever it while I'm going across it. So we use a rip saw and a bit of wax on it, makes it run a bit easier. Careful when you do it this way, you don't rub your hands on the teeth. Actually, before I start with this, I will just start with a cross cut saw because it's easier to get it started. If you look at the speed I'm going through that, I'm going through it. You look how much quicker a rip saw is. See the difference? Turn her up the other way, and we'll finish it off with this one. There we have it. Level them up at the back. Squirt the water in the vice. You can tell they're uneven, so I'm going to be focusing on this side first. So I've cut that in, in half, cleaned it up a bit. Then with a Sharpie, I'm using the width of the timber and I'll have that pointing up. And this one also pointing up. If I put that down there nice and flat, those two are now level. Now pick your board up, put one there with the arrow pointing up, one there with the arrow pointing up. If I sight down there, then they're parallel. Then I know that board's flat. If, for example, this was up like that when I viewed, I'd know I've got a high spot here, so I'll concentrate on planing. Conversely, if that one was up, high spot there. It could be high spot there. It might even be a low spot down here. So that's something you can just check. The 
number one priority is to get the top flat. So put winding sticks on it, grab a piece of chalk, and I'll have a look, excuse me. Okay, so on up down here, so I don't know if that's a dip here. Okay, what's causing that is right there, there's a hump. So as I look down here, there's an air gap, see that, between this winding stick and the piece of timber. So here is a high point, because if I push this down and then view up, these two sticks are parallel. So there's a high point there. So I'll mark that with a piece of chalk. The rest of it looks all right. All right. Now I know that's flat on the top. I'll run a smoothing plane over it. And then we can do the bottom.